Welcome Clarity Coders. We got a quick one today. We're gonna to build on our data visualization and we're gonna add pie charts into the mix. I'm gonna show you two things. I'm gonna show you how you can very simply set up a pie chart and then I'm gonna show you an example with a real world data set and show you how I work through a couple of the problems associated with those real world data sets. Let's jump right in. As you can see here, I am using Spider IDE. You can use whatever IDE or text editor you want to follow these examples. You are going to have to have matplotlib installed. If you just put in this line and run it, it shouldn't give you any error. If it says it doesn't know what matplotlib is or the module isn't found, you'll need to do either pip install matplotlib or if you're running Anaconda, you can do conda install matplotlib. Either way, just to get this module that we're gonna be working with here. So I'm gonna create a list of some values here and they don't have any meaning to us right now, so it's not gonna be a very meaningful plot. And here I'm going to create a pie plot by using our variable we set up top, plt, and I'm gonna run the dot pi function and I'm gonna pass in our values and then I'm gonna show our plot. So if I run this, you'll see that I get a not very helpful pie plot back. And that's all there is. You can build out from here. There's really nothing more to it. You can view this documentation to figure out exactly what you're trying to do in different scenarios. And I'm gonna run you some through some of the basic common tasks right now, but just know you can always visit this documentation and find out exactly what you need to do or what you're trying to do. So I'm gonna add some labels and a title to this. My labels are going to be me and my friend's names. These are some recent subscribers. Thank you guys. And a title, so this pie chart has a little more meaning. So as you can see here now, I have a pie chart where me and my friends had a pizza party and we kept track of who ate how many pieces of pizza. Now I passed in my values already. We're gonna add in the labels. You'll notice here that I made the attribute and the variable match up. That was just by my choice. You don't have to have those match up if you don't want but you will notice that you have to have the same amount of values as you do labels. So you can see Jake associates with two, Claudio associates with three, and Jorge associates with one. And now if I run this, you'll see that we get just a little more detail to our plot. So now we're gonna add in our own custom colors here. Now I'm passing them in as tuples. So you can see there's one tuple for each user in our chart. And I'm using the RGBA values. So it's between zero and one for red, green, and blue. So you can see the first one has red at one and zero for the other two. So it should be just red, second should be just blue, and the third should be just green. And then we're passing our custom colors in by setting colors equal to colors. Now again, I named the variable exactly the same. You don't have to. I could do something like this and it would still work. And if we run this, you can see we got our own custom colors here. Now you can create your own little prettier colors than what I did here. This is just what I'm throwing out here to show you how it's done. I'm gonna do one more thing here and create a dictionary of wedge properties. Now again, I got this from the documentation how to do this. We're going to add edge colors of black and a line width of two to kind of separate our wedges. And this attribute is called wedge props. And we can just pass it our dictionary. And I knew it took a dictionary because of the documentation. And now you'll see we got a very basic, not very pretty plot here. And that's good enough to start out with. Let's go ahead and grab our Corona data set again. We're gonna pull in whatever the most recent data was using pandas, and then we'll try and plot that. So I'm gonna add one import up here and that is pandas as pd. Again, if you run this and it says you can't find the module pandas, you can do pip install pandas, and then you should be ready to go with us. Now, I'm gonna copy and paste a lot of code in here that you have seen probably if you've watched the other two data visualization examples, but I'm gonna walk you through it here real quick if you haven't. So what we're doing here is we're going to pull in data from a live Corona data set. And all this code will be available for you on the GitHub. You can click it if you want, if you don't want to type it up. So what we're doing here is we're running out to this raw CSV that's updated daily, and we're grabbing that in by the URL, and we're reading it into a data frame here. Then we're grabbing out our unique states. 
So we're looking at the state column in our data frame and we're grabbing out all the unique values. Then right here, we're grabbing whatever the last date is. So I want this to dynamically update. So I don't want it to always grab a hard coded value of like 427 or something like that as a date. I want it to grab whatever the oldest date in the data set is and then filter out just the values for that date. So we're only looking at whatever the latest date is in this data set. Then we're gonna group by based on state and sum up all the cases. So on that last date, we're gonna take all the cases for Alabama, say, and sum it all up and give one value for Alabama. And then we're gonna sort the values and we're gonna set ascending equal to false. So that's gonna give us descending values. So the top is going to be the highest value in our data set. And then I'm just gonna print it out so we can see it here. Now we're not gonna use custom colors anymore, so I'm gonna take that out. And I'm gonna change the title. So I'm gonna turn this into an F string and I'm gonna say total cases on, I'm gonna use curly brackets so I can pass in a variable and I'm gonna pass in whatever the last date was because that's the date that we're showing this data for. And now we have all of our data in a series and that series is called series last date. So I'm gonna grab that and then I can call the dot values attribute. And now our labels are not in labels anymore. They're going to be on the series as well, dot index. So if we run this, let's reset our variables too. I'm gonna to go ahead and reset and clear all my variables. I'm gonna do reset. And now let's go ahead and run this. This will take just a second and you have to have an active internet connection if you're pulling in the data the way that I am here. So it's gonna run out and grab that data. And you can see here that we did get a printout for each of our states. In our variable explorer, you can see what our series looks like. So you can see our index are the state names and that's what we're using as our label down here. And the cases were our values and that's what we're using to plot. So our chart looks good. Now, obviously it's not very readable or very usable right now. So we're gonna go ahead and change it around a little bit to make this just a little better for us. With pie plots, a lot of times I don't use any more than five values, typically five or six maybe. So let's cut this down just to our top five states and we can make another column for other, for example. Now there are probably better ways to do this, but it's very easy to understand and we're not too worried about how fast our code is. We don't have enough data to really care optimization wise the difference this is gonna make. So we're gonna loop over this series and we're gonna take our top five states. See, we set our state count to five. You could change this to whatever you want. That's why I'm coding it up here. And we're gonna add those into our labels and our values. Then after we get our top five, we're gonna start keeping track of all the other states so we can have one slice for others. So let's go ahead and create our for loop. So this is gonna iterate over our series last date indexes and it's gonna store each value in a variable called state. So now for our first five values here, so while our state count is above zero, I'm gonna take whatever the state is and I'm gonna append it into our labels. Then I'm going to grab the value out of that series and I'm gonna use the state index to grab out the associated value. So I'm gonna look in series last date, I'm gonna pass it in whatever my current state is and it's gonna give me back the value and I'm gonna append that to value. Then I'm gonna decrement our counter. So this will run for the first five states. And now for my else case, I'm gonna add it to our other total for every other state in our data set. So no matter what the other states are, it's just gonna add it in our other total. And then after our for loop, I'm gonna append our other label and the other total. And that should be it, now we can plot it out. So remember, we're gonna plot out our values again and our labels, we stored back in labels. And we'll try and run this again. Right now we're reaching out and grabbing that CSV each time. So it would benefit you if you're going to work with something like this constantly to go ahead and download that and store it locally. That way you don't have to reach out to the internet every time and grab it. And you can see here we got a way more readable chart. I'm gonna run you through two quick things you can add to this and the rest you can find on the documentation itself. I'm gonna add a line up here that's going to select a style of plot to use. This is just gonna take care of the coloring for us. I'm also going to paste in a line here to explode some of the values out. So you've seen on a pie chart where they kind of pull one of the pieces out. All the zero ones are going to be flat and then we're going to pull one piece out. I think maybe New Jersey the way we have it set up here. 
And this is a radius between zero and one. So zero is gonna do nothing. The point one one is gonna pull out the piece just a little bit. And again, you have to have the same amount of numbers here as you do labels. So we're gonna add that in down here. And let's also add an auto percent to our chart as well. So this is a little string formatting. You can look that up if you're curious. Basically what we're doing here is we're doing a percentage with one decimal. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see here that we added our percentages. We exploded out the New, Jer New Jersey piece. We added our title. We got our basic setup. You can really run with this from here and make this exactly what you own. 3D, you can shadow it, you can do all kinds of things. Look at the documentation if you need anything more. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below or if you'd like to see something in our next videos. Thank you again. Please subscribe if you can or like the video. We appreciate it. And until next time, keep coding.